Good evening. I'd like to welcome you to tonight's uh, live streaming Good Friday service. Uh, I'd like to give uh, our announcements at the beginning of the service uh, because we'll finish our service with the closing of the book after, after singing our last hymn. Uh, again, a, re a reminder that Good Friday we celebrate and commemorate the death of our Lord Jesus, his payment for the sins of all mankind. Uh, uh, the cross is the message of foolishness, but the wisdom of God that saves us. And so we commemorate our Lord's, uh, our Lord's uh, tremendous death on this Good Friday. It wasn't good for him, but definitely good for us. A reminder that uh, we'll be celebrating our Lord's glorious resurrection with a live stream service at 1030 on Sunday morning on this very, very same channel. Our hymn says we worship tonight for Good Friday, and we'll follow the order of service on page 15. Our hymns are 125, 124, 139, and 137. Once again, 125, 124, 139, and 137. We'll begin our service tonight singing our first hymn, which is hymn 125. Tonight, we'll follow the order of service on page 15 in the front of the hymnal. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins to God our Father asking him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Holy and merciful Father, I confess that I am by nature sinful, and that I have disobeyed you in my thoughts, words, and actions. I have done what is evil and failed to do what is good. 
For this, I deserve your punishment both now and in eternity. But I am truly sorry for my sins, and trusting in my Savior, Jesus Christ, I pray. Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. Lord, have mercy on us. Christ, have mercy on us. Have mercy on us. God, our Heavenly Father, has been merciful to us and has given His only Son to has given his only son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ and by his authority, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. We continue on the middle of page 17 where it says prayer of the day. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. God most holy, look with mercy on this your family for whom our Lord Jesus Christ was willing to be betrayed, be given over into the hands of the wicked, and suffer death upon the cross. Keep us always faithful to him, our only Savior, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Our first scripture lesson for this Good Friday is found in the Old Testament book of Isaiah, the 52nd chapter, beginning at the 13th verse. Our first two lessons from here and from Psalm 22 are the most clear and vivid prophecies in the Old Testament about Jesus' crucifixion. Look, my servant will succeed. He will rise. He will be lifted up. He will be highly exalted. Just as many were appalled at him, his appearance was so disfigured that he did not look like a man, and his form was disfigured more than any other person. So he will sprinkle many nations, and kings will shut their mouths because of him, because they will see something they had never been told before, and they will understand something they have never heard before. Who has believed our report? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? He grew up before him like a tender shoot, and like a root from dry ground. He had no attractiveness and no majesty. When we saw him, nothing about his appearance made us desire him. He was despised and rejected by men, a man who knew grief who was well acquainted with suffering, like someone from whom people cannot bear to look at. He was despised, and we thought nothing of him. Surely he was taking up our weaknesses, and he was carrying our sufferings. We thought it was because of God that he was stricken, smitten, and afflicted. But it was because of our rebellion that he was pierced. He was crushed for the guilt our sins deserved. The punishment that brought us peace was upon him, and by his wounds we are healed. We all, like sheep, have gone astray. Each of us has turned to his own way. But the Lord has charged all our guilt to him. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he did not open his mouth. Like a lamb he was led to the slaughter, and like a sheep that is silent in front of its shears, he did not open his mouth. He was taken away without a fair trial and without justice. And of his generation, who even cared? So he was cut off from the land of the living, 
He was struck because of the rebellion of my people. They would have assigned him a grave with the wicked, but he was given a grave with the rich in his death, because he had done no violence and no deceit was in his mouth. Yet it was the Lord's will to crush him and to allow him to suffer. Because you made his life a guilt offering, he will see offspring. He will prolong his days, and the Lord's gracious plan will succeed in his hand. After his soul experiences anguish, he will see the light of life. He will provide satisfaction. Through their knowledge of him, my just servant will justify the many, for he himself carried their guilt. Therefore, I will give him an allotment among the great, and with the strong he will share plunder, because he poured out his life to death, and he let himself be counted with rebellious sinners. He carried himself the sin of many, and he intercedes for the rebels. This is our first lesson. Our next lesson, I will read Psalm 22. Psalm 22, out of all of the Psalms in Scripture, about a dozen that, that foretell and preach and teach directly about Jesus, Psalm 22 is one of the clearest. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? My groaning does nothing to save me. My God, I call out by day, but you do not answer. I call out by night, but there is no relief for me. Yet you are seated as the Holy One, praised by Israel. In you our fathers trusted. They trusted, and you delivered them. They cried out to you, and they were rescued. They trusted in you, and they were not disappointed. But I am a worm and not a man, scorned by men and despised by the people. All who see me mock me. They sneer. They shake their heads. They say, trust in the Lord. Let the Lord deliver him. Let him rescue him if he delights in him. But you are the one who brought me out of the belly. You made me trust when I was at my mother's breasts. I was cast on you from the womb. From the belly of my mother, you have been my God. Do not be distant from me, for distress is near, and there is no one to help. Many bulls surround me. Strong bulls from Bashan encircle me. Enemies open their mouths wide against me, like a lion that tears its prey and roars. Like water I am poured out, all my bones are pulled apart. My heart has become like wax, it is melted in the middle of my chest. My strength is dried up like broken pottery, and my tongue is stuck to the roof of my mouth. You lay me in the dust of death, for dogs have surrounded me, a band of evil men has encircled me. They have pierced my hands and my feet. I can count all my bones. They stare and gloat over me. They divide my garments among them. For my clothing they cast lots. But you, O Lord, do not be distant. O my strength, come quickly to help me. Deliver my life from the sword, my only life from the power of the dog. Save me from the mouth of the lion, from the horns of the wild oxen, you have answered me. I will declare your name to my brothers. In the midst of the congregation, I will praise you. You who fear the Lord, praise him. All you descendants of Jacob, honor him. Stand in awe of him, all you descendants of Israel. For he has not despised nor detested the affliction of the afflicted. He has not hidden his face from him, but when he cried out to him, he heard. You are the source of my praise in the great congregation. 
I will fulfill my vows in the presence of those who fear him. The poor will eat and be satisfied. Those who seek him will praise the Lord. May he live in your hearts forever. All the ends of the earth will remember and turn to the Lord, and all the families of the nations will bow down before you. For the kingdom belongs to the Lord, and he rules over the nations. All the rich of the earth will eat and bow down. All who go down to the dust will kneel before him, those who cannot keep themselves alive. Descendants will serve him. For generations, people will be told about the Lord. They will come and proclaim his righteousness to a people yet to be born, because he has done it. Here ends our song. We continue with our epistle lesson. It's found in the New Testament letter to the Hebrews, the fourth chapter, beginning at the 14th verse. Therefore, since we have a great high priest, who has gone through the heavens, namely, Jesus, the Son of God, let us continue to hold on to our confession. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who has been tempted in every way, just as we are, yet was without sin. So let us approach the throne of grace with confidence, so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. In the days of his flesh, he offered prayers and pleas with loud cries and tears to the one who was able to save him from death, and he was heard because of his reverence. Although he was the Son, he learned obedience from the things he suffered. After he was brought to his goal, he became the source of eternal salvation for everyone who obeys him, because he was designated by God as a high priest like Melchizedek. Here ends the epistle. Surely he took up our infirmities and carried our sorrows. Yet we considered him stricken by God, smitten by him, and afflicted. The Holy Gospel for Good Friday is found in the Gospel of John, the 19th chapter, beginning at the 17th verse. Carrying his own cross, he went out to what is called the place of a skull, which in Aramaic is called Golgotha. There they crucified him with two others, one on each side and Jesus in the middle. Pilate also had a notice written and fastened on the cross. It read, Jesus the Nazarene, the King of the Jews. Many of the Jews read this notice because the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city, and it was written in Aramaic, Aramaic Latin, and Greek. So the chief priests of the Jews said to Pilate, Do not write the king of the Jews, but that this man said, I am the king of the Jews. Pilate answered, What I have written, I have written. When the soldiers crucified Jesus, they took his clothes and divided them into four parts, one for each soldier. They also took his tunic, which was seamless, woven in one piece from top to bottom. So they said to one another, Let's not tear it. Instead, let's cast lots to see who gets it. This was so that the scripture might be fulfilled, which says, They divided my garments among them and cast lots for my clothing. So the soldiers did these things. Jesus' mother, his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene were standing near the cross. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing nearby, he said to his mother, Woman, here is your son. Then he said to the, to the disciple, Here is your mother. 
And from that time, this disciple took her into his own home. After this, knowing that everything had now been finished, and to fulfill the scriptures, Jesus said, I thirst. A jar full of sour wine was sitting there. So they put a sponge soaked in sour wine on a hyssop branch and held it to his mouth. When Jesus had received the sour wine, he said, It is finished. Then, he bow, then bowing his head, he gave up his spirit. Here ends the gospel. our Christian faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed. You can find those words on page 19 in the hymnal. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We'll continue our service singing hymn number 124.
Let's bow our heads in prayer. We praise you, O Christ, and we bless you. By your holy cross, you have redeemed the world. Amen. God's word for our meditation on this Good Friday is found for us in the Gospel of Matthew, the 27th chapter, beginning at the 45th verse. From the sixth hour until the ninth hour, there was darkness over all the land. About the ninth hour, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, saying, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, which means, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of those standing there heard this, they said, This fellow is calling for Elijah. Immediately, one of them ran, took a sponge, and soaked it with some sour wine. Then he put it on a stick and gave him a drink. The rest said, leave him alone. Let's see if Elijah comes to save him. After Jesus cried out again with a loud voice, he gave up his spirit. This is God's word. Brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus, if you sometime go into your computer and go to Google and search for the world's greatest battles or history's greatest battles. You'll find all sorts of things from history and battles from different wars throughout the country and throughout the world in different periods of history. You might hear about uh, 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 the, you might hear about Leonidas in the Persian Wars from thousands and thousands of years ago. You might hear about battles in World War II. But one of the websites that gives, uh, uh, that uh, defines its criteria for what makes one of the world's greatest battles is how it affected world history. And so some might think, uh, uh, there are some that think that one of the greatest uh, battles was D-Day beginning, you know, at the beginning of World War II. And again, those were things that had many, many different impacts. Some would maybe uh, talk about uh, the Pacific War in World War II and the dropping of the bombs on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Being a person who follows sports, I think of one of the greatest battles in history to be that goes back into the 1970s, a boxing match between Muhammad Ali and between Joe Frazier. Actually, it was their third, their third fight the Thriller and Manila. And both of those men, after that fight, both said that they thought that they were going to die in that boxing match. It's one of the greatest boxing matches I've ever, ever seen. Quite a battle. It was brutal, to say the least. As we continue, and we're just about to the end of the series of sermons, uh, under the theme, the Son of God goes forth to war. Tonight, on Good Friday, as we commemorate Jesus' death, we see for sure the greatest battle that was ever fought. Jesus and his enemy, the devil, as Jesus is fighting him on the cross. Satan attacked Jesus relentlessly. Jesus, uh, uh, a scripture tells us about Jesus being tempted by the devil at the beginning of his three-year ministry. And then it's pretty much silent. But you and I can rest assured that scripture, as we heard in the epistle lesson, tells us that Jesus was tempted just like each and every one of us. Except he was without sin. He didn't sin. So Jesus was tempted every day. And the devil... He was pulling out all the stops. But as Jesus was brought to the cross, as Jesus was there to sacrifice himself for the sins of the whole world, the devil was going to give it everything he had. 
And when we think about all of the readings and all of the things and all of the accounts that we have of the crucifixion and on Good Friday, I can't even begin to imagine what it was like for Jesus in that battle. Thankfully, he was victorious. But the beating that he took, the suffering that he endured all for us, was just unimaginable. Being arrested on that Thursday evening in the middle of the night, being kept sleepless, being brutally pummeled by the soldiers of the high priests and also by the Roman soldiers. We're told that Jesus had been scourged, whipped uh, with whips that had pieces of metal in them, uh, which was not normal for a crucifixion to begin with, but those pieces of metal dug in and ripped out pieces of flesh, causing immense bleeding and the loss of a lot of blood, weakening Jesus even more. The beatings that he took from those soldiers and the like. And then the crucifixion itself. You know, as we look at the cross once again, and on last Sunday, once again, we had our gaze upon that crucifix. The nails that were driven into Jesus' hands and to his feet. I can't even imagine the pain that it was took to be nailed to the cross, but that wasn't it. It wasn't just pain in the hands and the wrists. Anyone who uh, um, had thought up such a gruesome, vile, brutal, and sick form of execution, it reminds me of what Scripture says about the imagination of mankind being evil from its youth, only being evil all the time. It was a, a torturous death because as a person hung on the cross, it constricted your rib cage and tightened it. You could only take shallow breaths. And so in order to catch your breath, you had to push up, inflicting pain on your feet. You couldn't hold on to that very long, and then you hung again, bringing pain to your hands. And you basically exhausted and almost killed yourself. And then the fact that Satan was all behind this, again, being uh, not only a liar and the father of lies, but the, doc, uh, but, uh, the, the, the father of all sin and, uh, and, and everything behind it. It was a long process. Very often it took weeks, or at least a week, days, three, four, five, six, sometimes seven days. But Jesus died very quickly. You ever wonder why that is? because of the brutal battle, the brutal attacks that the devil brought against Jesus on Thursday evening and on Friday morning and on Friday afternoon on the cross. We're told that Jesus suffered our hell. He suffered hell for us. Once again, that was a punishment that God brought on Jesus who took that punishment for us. But the devil was sure hoping that that was going to get Jesus to give up and to come off the cross. When Jesus cried out those words, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? He was experiencing, mind-boggling as it is, can't understand it, but we believe it because God tells us in Scripture, God separated himself from himself. Jesus sub uh, uh, experienced sub separation from God, hell itself there on the cross. And then all of the verbal abuse that Jesus took as he was hanging there, listening to the, the priests and the teachers of the law and the soldiers, all mocking him, saying, you know what, huh, he said he was the son of God, let God rescue him if he wants him. The devil was behind those taunts once again, hoping that Jesus would listen to those taunts and come up down from the cross and give up saving you and me and all believers, and paying for the sins of all mankind. Can't even begin to comprehend how brutal that battle was on that cross. But when the dust had settled, we hear Jesus' victory cry. 
hanging there on that cross for about three hours because he was carrying the burden uh, and the weight of every sin that was committed and would ever be committed, Jesus died quickly. He refused to take a drink while he was at first while hanging on the cross because given that drink of, of wine mixed with gall was really kind of like an, an anesthetic and he didn't want to have anything to take away from the punishment that he was experiencing for you and for me. But then at the end, when he knew that all that was completed, he took that drink. And then we're told out that he told that he cried out in a loud voice, a victory cry. Matthew tells us that, or actually Luke tells us that those words were, it is finished. Three simple words in the English. In the Greek, it was just one. To tell us that. That word was actually one that Jewish merchants and Roman merchants would put on stamps. And when people came in and paid off their bills, their accounts with them, they would stamp that on the bill, paid in full. And that was what Jesus was crying out victoriously on the cross for you and for me. Paid in full. Every sin committed by every single person who will ever exist was paid for by Jesus on that cross. And because of that, the devil is defeated. Actually, the devil was defeated before it even started. Even from the beginning of time, when the devil rebelled against God and there was war in heaven between the good angels and the evil angels, Satan and the evil angels lost and were cast out. The devil didn't have a chance against our champion. It was the greatest, it is the greatest, and most brutal victory ever, more than one can imagine. It is finished. Nothing left is left to be done. And what a blessing here that in just a few hours, from now until Sunday morning, we'll get to see God's stamp of approval on that too. When we see the greatest victory of all in Jesus conquering death, not only for himself, but for all of us. Our warrior, he goes to battle for us. Our warrior is victorious. The greatest warrior that this world has ever seen, fighting the greatest battle that's ever been fought. And there is no doubt, Satan is defeated. Now he can poke, he can prod, he can tempt, he can make things difficult, but he's lost. And because of that, you and I can rest assured with the words of the Apostle Paul as he keeps in mind not only Jesus' crucifixion, but also his glorious resurrection. When he says, I am convinced that neither angels, nor demons, nor things present, nor things to come, nor anything else in all creation will ever be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. That's what this day is all about. Amen. The peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. At this time of the service, we usually have the collection of our offerings. 
Once again, a reminder to, to all of our members, uh, ministry still goes on in Cologne and in Brewster and in Winter. Um, and so uh, as the Lord moves you, you can, uh, you can bring your offerings to church and leave them off. Uh, you can put them in the mail, preferably not cash. There's also online giving options through Drive-In Financial, and uh, many of those have been explained before. At this time, we'll have our Good Friday prayer. Lord Jesus, in humble awe, in reverent silence, and in solemn trembling, your people have gathered around your cross to remember your death. O Christ, friend of sinners, have mercy on us. O Christ, Savior and Redeemer, have mercy on us. O Christ, only hope of a lost world, have mercy on us. At your cross, let us see all the ugliness, horror, and misery that sin, death, and Satan brought in the world and that you willingly took on yourself. Open our eyes to see that we deserve the death and torments of hell that you suffered for us. But open our eyes also to see that by your death, you destroyed death. By your sacrifice, you reconciled us with your Father. And by the blood you shed, you purchased us to belong to you forever. Help us believe that we are worth that much to you. Fill us with joy and peace in believing that we are truly free from condemnation and forgiven by your Father. Help us dedicate our lives in thankful love to you, who gave yourself for us. Hear us, O Lamb of God, who bore all sin for us. And we also pray the prayer that Jesus has taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We'll continue our service singing him 139.
Grant to your church the Holy Spirit and the wisdom that comes from above. Let nothing hinder your word from being freely proclaimed to the joy and edifying of Christ's holy people, so that we may serve you in steadfast faith and confess your name as long as we live. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. service singing hymn 137. 